At one point during the history of Charles Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, Professor X swore not to train any more mutants due to the deaths of many of his students during the dangerous adventures that they were sent on. The nail in the coffin for Charles was when he believed he had lost the main team of the X-Men for good after an attack from alien predators known as the Brood. Professor X's mind was changed, however, when two young mutants were brought to him needing help and guidance. The first of the two mutants was a young refugee Vietnamese girl named Xian Khoi Man, self-named Karma. Karma's main power was the ability to telepathically possess others, bringing them completely under her control and even being able to reach into their memories and adopt the way that they think. She used this power on Peter Parker in order to use his powers to save her youngest two siblings from her criminal uncle and her twin brother Tran, who had identical powers to her own. The Fantastic Four later became involved to help Xi'an and a no longer possessed Spider-Man rescue the children after her initial attempt only incriminated Spider-Man as a kidnapper. With the help of the other heroes, Xi'an was able to successfully save her brother and sister, but only after she used her powers to end Tran's life by absorbing his life force while he had all of the members of the Fantastic Four under his control. She was later referred to Professor X by Reed Richards, the leader of the Fantastic Four. The second young mutant to change Charles's mind was a girl named Rain Sinclair, known by the alias of Wolfbane. As her name would suggest, Rain's mutant powers allowed her to transform into a wolf-like creature, which also gave her enhanced strength and reflexes, heightened senses, as well as a degree of a healing factor. Rain was brought to Charles Xavier's school for gifted youngsters after she was found by Moira McTaggart, a geneticist who studied mutants, though a mutant herself with the power of reincarnation. Moira found Rain as she was being chased by an angry mob led by a local minister who was secretly her father. The mob was intent on killing Rain, accusing her of being a witch. Luckily, Moira was able to calm the mob down and send them away unhappily so that she could rescue Rain. Once the two girls were brought to Charles and he was convinced to train them, he almost immediately received a letter concerning another mutant in need of training from an old friend, a Native American chief and shaman named Black Eagle. The letter contained a request for Charles to take in and train Black Eagle's granddaughter, Danielle Moonstar, who had developed mutant powers to project 3D images from people's minds before them. However, with her powers, she could only project images of the worst fears of those whom she used her powers on. This had caused her to become an outcast, and she had fled to the mountains where she was cared for by Black Eagle. Danielle had been told earlier by Black Eagle that she needed to be trained by Professor X, which angered her as she believed that Charles was her enemy because he was a white man. This emotion caused Danielle to unintentionally use her powers to project an image of her grandfather being beaten to death by two armored soldiers. This scene brought Danielle to the realization that she really did need to learn to control her powers and she agreed to go to Professor X. Not too much later, Danielle was awakened during the night when she heard a psychic scream from her grandfather. She raced out into the night to find him, but when she did, it was only his lifeless body that she found in the middle of the road. Danielle knew that the image she had projected from earlier was from one of her grandfather's visions, and that he had been killed by the mysterious armored soldiers. In the following days, Xavier, Xi'an, and Rain arrived in Danielle's mountains to find the gravesite of Black Eagle. As Charles began to mourn the death of his friend, the three were surprised by an explosive attack. The attack came from the same soldiers who had attacked Black Eagle earlier. The soldiers were in pursuit of Danielle, and thinking Charles and his two mutants were taken care of, they continued their chase. As one of the soldiers closed in on Danielle, one of her few friends, a mountain lion who she had named Ridge Runner, attacked the soldier. To Danielle's horror, Ridge Runner was easily thrown over the shoulder of her attacker and thrown off the side of a nearby cliff. It seemed that Danielle would soon join Ridge Runner as the guard grabbed her and prepared to send her falling to her death. Just as things were looking grim for Danielle, Karma came to her rescue by possessing the soldier who held her and forced him to attack his comrades. Once Danielle was safe again, Charles, Xi'an, and Rain arrived to meet her. Charles telepathically interrogated the remaining soldier to find out that they were sent by a man named Donald Pierce, a member of the Hellfire Club, who wanted to rid the world of mutants and take control of the Hellfire Club. After the soldier had been interrogated, Danielle tried to take revenge for her grandfather's death by stabbing the now defenseless soldier with a knife. Charles, however, stopped her before she could harm her attacker, telling her that the defeated soldiers would receive justice from the police. Reluctantly, Danielle backed down declaring that for now she would join Charles so that she could get revenge on Pierce. When Professor X interrogated the soldier, he also learned of two other planned attacks on young mutants by Donald Pierce. The attacks were to take place in Brazil and Kentucky, 
So Professor X, Karma, Wolfsbane, Dr. McTaggart, and now Danielle, who would adopt the name Mirage, split up and headed out to stop the attacks. In Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Dr. McTaggart, Danielle, and Jean were startled in their hotel room when police barged in accusing them of the attempted kidnapping of Roberto da Costa, a young man who had recently frightened fans of a soccer game he was playing in when he transformed into something like a completely black shadow of himself and hurled another player across the field with sudden superhuman strength. This young man was also the young mutant that the three had come to rescue in Brazil in the first place. The police placed the three mutants under arrest. However, as they were being led out of the hotel, Xi'an used her powers to possess one of the two officers and force him to punch the other. This created enough confusion for Xi'an and Danielle to escape to find Roberto. Moira stayed back with the officers to try to convince them that they had the wrong people. Later that night, using a mutant detecting device, the two girls located Roberto at his home. As they got close, however, Roberto came outside and began to run away. They followed him to a warehouse where Roberto had gone to save his girlfriend, Juliana, who had been kidnapped by bionic assassins sent by Donald Pierce. Roberto attempted to use his super strength powers to fight off the assassins, but his strength subsided quickly and his upper hand in the fight went along with it. Luckily, that's when Danielle and Xi'an arrived mentally and physically attacking Pierce's assassins. A quick battle ensued, ending with the last remaining soldier open firing on Roberto, who was stunned from his powers wearing off. Realizing that Roberto would not have enough time to react, Juliana jumped in front of him, pushing him to the side and taking his bullet for him, which killed her instantly. Distraught by the sacrifice and loss of Juliana, Roberto, soon to be known as Sunspot, joined forces with the other young mutants in order to make Donald Pierce pay for what he had done. Meanwhile, in Kentucky, Professor X and Rain Sinclair were driving down a quiet forest road when their car was suddenly hit by a young man flying at them from the side at missile-like speed. The boy would turn out to be none other than Samuel Guthrie, the mutant who Charles and Rain had come to Kentucky to meet and help. Sam had been hired by Donald Pierce after his mutant powers revealed themselves during a cave-in at a coal mine where Sam had just begun working. Sam's mutant abilities allowed him to release energy from his body that allowed him to rocket through the air. While he did so, he was able to create a protective field around him that absorbed incoming kinetic energy, causing him to be nearly indestructible when this field was active. During the cave-in, Sam attempted to save another worker despite the fact that doing so would most likely bring an end to his own life. It was then that instinctively Sam's powers kicked in, protecting himself and the other worker with his protective shield while launching them both through the roof of the cave above them and into the safety of the forest above. Now working for Pierce and given the name Cannonball, Sam had been sent to capture Professor X, so after his initial assault on the vehicle, he moved to pull Charles from the wreckage. Rain, who was thrown from the car during the impact, watched in wolf form as Charles was taken into a helicopter by Cannonball and two bionic soldiers. As the helicopter disappeared into the night, Rain was able to follow Charles's scent in her wolf form to a nearby compound. Once inside, Rain made her way to the roof and was able to find a window where she could see Professor X. He was being held by Donald Pierce, who had attached a machine to the professor that prevented him from using his psychic powers. As Rain was watching the helpless professor and trying to come up with a plan, she was suddenly attacked by Cannonball. Their fight was short-lived, however, as Sam was suddenly surrounded by images of a massive cave-in, images created by Danielle's powers who had just arrived. Terrified by the supposed cave-in around him, Cannonball reacted by blasting himself out of the cave, though in reality he sent himself through the wall and roof of a nearby building. This attracted the attention of Pierce's army of bionic soldiers. Rain and Danielle, who were also joined by Xi'an and Roberto, fought off the soldiers, eventually scattering them when Xi'an got a hold of one of their machine guns and opened fired. The young mutants continued fighting their way into the chamber with Xavier and Pierce. When they arrived, they each began taking their turns at attacking the man who had hurt them so much. Rain attacked first, but as she tried to bite into Pierce's arm, rather than blood and flesh, she was surprised to be biting into metal and wires. Donald retaliated with a quick kick to Rain's ribs, breaking them and potentially puncturing one of her lungs. Donald Pierce then revealed that just like his soldiers, he too was a bionic super soldier. In another attempt at him, Danielle tried to fry his mind by pulling out the deepest and most horrifying fears from Pierce's mind. She was also stunned to find that Donald's mind had protections built into it to keep out psychic attacks. Roberto tried to be the next to attack, but he was interrupted as Cannonball made his return and knocked him down. 
This left only Xi'an to fight from the now weakened force of mutants. Unfortunately for Xi'an, as Danielle had already learned, Donald's mind was protected from her psychic attacks, and she was quickly downed by an electric blast from Donald's bionic arm. With the team of young mutants in shambles, Donald ordered Cannonball to kill them. Sam, who had only taken Pierce's employment offer to pay for his recently widowed mother and younger siblings, and not realizing what he had signed up for, refused Donald's order. Furious, Donald declared that Cannonball would now share the fate of the other mutants that lay beaten in the room. He drew his gun, but was suddenly stopped by an unseen force when he went to pull the trigger. It was Professor X. During the confusion of the battle, severely injured Rain had found the release switch for the device on Charles. His immense psychic power cut right through the shields on Donald's mind, and the two became locked in a silent mental battle for control of Donald's mind. Charles came out victorious against Pierce, leaving him completely defenseless and defeated. Pierce was then turned over to another woman who was imprisoned, along with Xavier named Tessa, a member of the Hellfire Club who promised to take care of Pierce for his attempts to take control of the club. The rest of the mutants were rescued shortly after by Moira, who was waiting nearby to get them to safety and to get medical attention for Rain. In all of this, Cannonball was left behind at a loss after being lashed out by Roberto for allying himself with Donald Pierce. Later, back at the mansion, Jian, Rain, Danielle, and Roberto prepared to begin their promised training with Professor X. They donned their new uniforms and gathered together just as an unexpected visitor arrived. This visitor was Sam, aka Cannonball, from their battle earlier. The young mutants were startled to see him at first, but Charles explained that he had personally invited Sam to join them and their new team, and to begin this new generation of mutants. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more videos to come. Also feel free to drop us a comment below on other videos you may be interested in seeing for the future, or just any thoughts you have on this video.